November 8th, 2004, one day before Halo 2 released, Chad B posted on Metacritic in regards to Halo 2, this game disappointed me very much. I can't believe I was lied to or led the wrong way. I got it and the game is not all that it is hyped to be. The multiplayer is good, yeah, yeah, so what? But there's a thing called single player. That is what counts to me. Oh yeah, Bungie? You suck. Okay, seriously, one of my favorite hobbies now is looking back at old reviews for games that ended up becoming completely iconic, especially like Halo 2, which is often regarded as one of the best masterpieces, not only in the Halo franchise, but in the first person shooting genre as a whole. Did so much for multiplayer and really progressed the in-game universe to levels that not a lot of fans thought were even possible. And yeah, some of these reviews and these arguments posted back in 2004 are maybe a little bit less informed or just hilarious to read all these years later. I enjoyed playing the new version, but not worth the hype. The ending, a shameless setup for Halo 3 on Xbox 2. The game was just getting interesting when it quit and ended. It was like Microsoft pulled the plug on development and rushed it to market in time for Christmas. Jared gave it 1 out of 10 saying, I didn't like the alien levels. All others were good the first time, but only the first time, except the first Earth level and kind of the second. Multiplayer is okay. I don't know if I'm the only person who just find so much entertainment reading stuff like this. But while Halo 2 has such a legendary legacy behind it, back in the day there were still a lot of people who truly ended up being disappointed in Halo 2 when it launched, believe it or not. I actually remember almost getting in a fight in elementary school over it when one of my friends said he didn't like Halo 2. And while with Halo it seems that each time literally anything gets announced, seemingly awesome or awful, the Halo community nearly implodes on itself. And I think for the sake of broadening our own point of view that if maybe we looked at some of the values criticisms behind Halo 2, maybe we'll get a perspective or some insight or maybe we'll look at the game in a way we hadn't actually thought about just yet and maybe even understand why some people genuinely hated Halo 2. And while we personally love Halo 2, we remember from back in the day and also just spending a lot of time looking back at archived conversations online and what people were saying around the launch of Halo 2, what things people mostly were struggling with when it came down to whether or not they enjoyed the game. And while we still love Halo 2, we do understand that in a sense Halo 2 did have a massive change in direction with Halo as a whole and while a lot of people were on board with it, some people really couldn't grasp their heads around it. Like for the story for instance, this game introduced not only a new story but almost a new storytelling technique with more characters like the Arbiter, more world building, more just general lore built into each cutscene along the way and it was really different. A lot of plot lines were introduced in Halo 2. One that we absolutely loved in the first, second, and third times we played through this game. But to some veteran Halo fans, ones who were fully enthralled by how Halo Combat Evolved presented itself, felt like Halo 2 not only overloaded in a new narrative style not present in Combat Evolved, but also the complicated plot lines that were introduced in Halo 2 kind of converged together to what? A cliffhanger ending? I remember that kid in my school arguing that he didn't like in the last level of Halo 2, you played as the Arbiter and not the Master Chief, and the ending wasn't nearly as exciting as Combat Evolved. And while at the time I was willing to disown him as a friend, maybe he actually had a point. Sure, all these years later, I've appreciated Halo 2 with the context of really knowing how it wraps up into Halo 3, but I can see how a story that introduces so many characters and plot lines and lore and backstory, just for most of them not to really reach any sort of major resolution, could be a bit jading, especially with the massive hype train that was around Halo 2. You remember 2004, it wasn't just a little, hey, new Halo's out, it was a worldwide movement in the gaming industry. This was a big deal. However, taking this approach does do a huge disservice to the newer and more meaningful narrative building that premiered in Halo 2 and the fact that Halo 2 expanded the lore and the universe in directions we never expected and of course the fact that Halo 2's storytelling had major implications across the entire gaming industry it would also be kind of overlooked if you were to really double down on this argument for Halo 2, but you know, I'm just trying to be the devil's advocate here. At the same time, with Halo 2 having such a rush development, that third arc of the game did end up getting scrapped, and 
And Tartarus being that epic culmination definitely didn't have that same excitement of driving the Warthog through a ship that's blowing up at the end of Halo Combat Evolved. I do have to say this is one of my favorite reviews I saw on Metacritic. After reading a bunch of reviews, it's pretty obvious to me that the average player of the game is one of two types. One, mindless idiot who just likes the run gun game, or two, involved player who likes to master every gun controls storyline and feature of the game to its fullest. I'm the second one. That's where this game falls flat on its face. No story, no difficult gameplay, no real challenge except for how fast you can pump bullets into the next 50 enemies that pop up on the screen. I'm bored of this gameplay. The multiplayer is better, but not by much. A no bots feature doesn't fill the huge maps and Xbox Live costs too damn much to justify its existence. I refuse to shell out 200 plus dollars for the system, $60 for the game, and $40 a month for the ability to play online? Overall disappointing, I'll be going back to favorites like Counter-Strike and Unreal on PC before I touch Halo 2 again. There's a lot to unpack, especially with his Xbox Live somehow costing $40 a month in 2004. Also, Halo 2's campaign was apparently too easy for him. I'm not sure if he was playing through on Legendary difficulty or not, but oof. However, there were actually other criticisms out there during this time that did at least take note into some of the repetitiveness in Halo 2. And for instance, with the amount of times that we have to go through and play Halo 2 again and again, there are a lot of moments that we've recognized in Halo 2 specifically that seem to favor some sort of copy and paste or just long scripted sequences to most likely make the campaign appear longer to the player. Sure, a lot of this time can be used for more world building through things like exposition dumps, but coming from Halo 1 to Halo 2, the amount of gondola rides, the multiple underwater elevators, the hold out here for a while section, and the even more gondola rides, it does seem like there's a lot of filler content set up to just kind of stretch the game's length out a little bit longer. But I think we should also note that to this day, people still regard Halo 2 in that upper echelon of Halo games, because at the end of the day, despite all of this, the gameplay, the combat, and the in-game atmosphere were so exciting that none of those little things mattered. But online multiplayer? Pay money, what? This one I don't fully understand the argument as much because I feel like the fact that online was introduced was so massive and exciting for the gaming industry. I feel like the outrage over Xbox Live spans from the same type of arguments we see in things like console wars today, for instance. Like, some dude online can only afford one console, so they decide to spend all their free time trashing on people who chose the other console just to justify their own purchase. And I think Halo 2 proved a lot of early doubters wrong with Xbox Live and online, because to this day, while things like Unreal Tournament 4 have a fan base, I don't think it compares to the massive impact that Halo 2 had on the industry. But we can understand some of these smaller criticisms that people have made over the years without necessarily tarnishing the masterpiece that is Halo 2. I can see how some people miss the god pistol from Combat Evolved, and maybe some people didn't like Master Chief's new helmet, though I like the Mark VI helmet a lot. There's, for instance, a lot of extra characters with their own narratives, and not as much of the lone exploration that was found in Halo Combat Evolved, which is pretty tonally different, and with all of the graphics and visuals that look absolutely gorgeous at times, sometimes Miranda Keys shows up on the screen. But overall, it seems like one of the biggest complaints that we see when it comes down to Halo 2 probably lies in the fact that there was so much hype and excitement about the release of Halo 2. And at the end of the day, whether people were just joining on the hype train and not knowing what to expect, or just didn't like the fact that this game was so hyped up, maybe is why some people really didn't end up liking Halo 2 as much. Still, this is isn't necessarily a video to point at criticisms of Halo 2 as much as to show a different perspective because for the most part we think the people watching this video and ourselves included think Halo 2 is an amazing and spectacular game and it holds up amazingly today in its own and when it released it was game changing. It literally had so many different impacts throughout the entire gaming industry and that's something we really appreciate but still it's fun to kind of look back into the little subsection in this iconic game that has such a historical significance and look at the little group of people who really just were outraged about Halo 2's release nonetheless. Also, there were some people who felt like the demo that was shown off for Halo 2 at E3, which was praised and people were so excited about, it honestly didn't show up anywhere in Halo 2 whatsoever. And we've done a whole video even detailing the whole development process of Halo 2 and what happened with that demo, but nonetheless, we can see how some people maybe felt a little misled by that level level alone, but I feel like at that point you'd be really just trying to grasp for anything to use against 
Halo 2. But what did you think of Halo 2? Were there things you didn't like about it? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on. Maybe if you really like this video, you'd even go check out our Patreon and support our channel so we can do more videos like this on a regular basis. But otherwise, that's it for today. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.